Welcome into Bombers Live. I'm your host, Brendan Miller, and we have an exciting interview today as one of the, I'd say probably one of the best baseball players on the Ithaca baseball team joins us. It's Garrett Callahan. Garrett, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Not bad. I'm excited to, uh, to get going here. You know, we had a little bit of an issue uh, with uh, some tech stuff, but we got it all figured out now. We're ready to go. Um, so if, if you're all good to get into this, I, I think uh, I am too. Yeah, for sure. All right, awesome. So I think, you know, we might as well just start off, uh, you know, at the beginning. Uh, you know, how did you decide that Ithaca was going to be the place for you? You know, in high school, I wasn't really getting a lot of attention. Um, I'm 6'3 and about 220 pounds now. In high school, I was about 5'10, probably 190. So I wasn't very big. I wasn't very strong. Um, I wasn't really getting the Division One interest that I kind of wanted in high school. But I think that's a blessing in disguise because Ithaca has been the best place in the world for me. Um, so it kind of was like a late decision for me. I was down to actually a walk-on opportunity at a Division I school, a smaller Division I school in Ithaca. And Ithaca just seemed like the better place for me to go, and I felt more at home right away. So uh, that's how I decided on Ithaca. Older Coach Val, who uh, is now an assistant, um, he definitely persuaded me to come, and I, I've been so happy here. And um, I think that's the best decision I've ever made. Yeah, I, it, it really sounds like it. And, you know, coming from, obviously, you're from Franklin Park, New Jersey, so not – you know, an upstate New York native or anything, but, you know, this kind of leads me into to what I want to talk about next, because uh, if I'm correct uh, in my research here, you played for the Cortland Crush in 2019. I did. I did. That was also a lot of fun. I had a great summer out there. Yeah. Uh, so I called games for the Cheryl Silversmiths that year as well. So I have actually called some of your games before. And, you know, just for fun yesterday, I knew we were, that you were coming on, went and looked at you know, your stats uh, when you were playing against the Silversmiths, and uh, I'll read them out here because they're just absolutely absurd. Uh, 438 uh, average, 550 on base, 625 uh, slugging percentage for a 1175 OPS. That, that's ridiculous. Uh, tell me a little bit of time, you know, with the crush and, and summer ball. I know you're going up, uh, I believe, the Northwoods League uh, this summer as well, right? Yeah, so I played after uh, the crush ended. I actually went out to the Northwoods League, and then I was supposed to play in it last summer. Um, obviously, with COVID going on, it kind of got delayed and stuff, and I got sent out to Michigan, and that got shut down because of COVID as well. Um, so it was a little bit of a hectic uh, summer and stuff. But this summer, um, planning right now, I'm starting on the Cape League um, and then making my way out to the Northwoods League after that. Um, but going back into my sophomore summer with the crush, you know, I had a really good time. Um, playing against all those teams was a lot of fun and just living with some guys that aren't from Ithaca. That was a really good experience. And the coaches there and everyone, every, everyone on the staff there made it a lot of fun and a really great summer. And I couldn't ask for a better summer team to play for. I do have to ask though, you know, three games at Noyes Park and no home runs to that right field fence. I mean, it's only what, 227 down that line? <laughs> yeah, it's a little crazy. Um, one of the one of the more unique fields I've ever played at, with it being about 480 to center field and <laughs> 240 down the right field line. Um, you know, sometimes I'm not really much of a pole hitter. I was still trying to focus on going to left center. Um, that's my approach at every at bat and stuff. And I really just didn't get any inside pitches to pull out of there. Even though, you know, it can be a little bit tempting sometimes. Yeah, you know, listen, I, from behind the from behind the backstop, I was trying to hit it over the fence too. So so don't you worry. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about uh, Ithaca just a little bit more. Obviously, you know, last season or, or recently, you've transitioned from older Coach Val to younger Coach Val. So do you want to talk a little bit about that and, uh, and what that transition has been like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's been extremely smooth, especially with having older Coach Val still on board as an assistant coach and stuff. Um, they, they value the same exact thing, you know, hard work, dedication to the program, um, resiliency, discipline. So in terms of a culture, I, I believe we have the same kind of culture. Um, the only thing I'm really seeing that's different is younger Coach Val is able to connect with our players a little bit better just because he's younger and he's been through the college experience way more recently. Um, and also we use a lot more technology with younger Coach Val. Um, he's more of like a new school coach, um, whereas older Val is kind of like whatever I see, that's what I think is right. Um, whereas Coach Val sometimes will use techno uh, excuse me, technology to make sure – um, his decisions are correct. Um, but just in terms of the transition, it couldn't have been any smoother. Um, I've, I've enjoyed both of them immensely and they're both great coaches. Yeah, obviously that's uh, that's good to hear for the, the Ithaca program. Uh, and speaking of, um, 
you know, you guys got outside uh, yesterday was your first outdoor practice, if, if I'm correct. Um, and obviously, you know, we've been going through a lot of restrictions as far as uh, when players are, or how many people are allowed to meet and, and when players are actually allowed to get on field. So, so what was it like actually getting out there for the first time yesterday and then today as well? Oh, it, it was one of the better two days of my college experience so far. You know, we've been locked up for the past year. Um, even being inside, you know, it can get a little tiring sometimes. There's only so much you can accomplish inside. And just being out on the field and literally just doing things like smelling dirt and grass and <laughs> hitting baseballs live on the field, it's, 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 there's, you can't, there's no better feeling. Um, I'm just so grateful that we're back and able to play this season. We're so excited to start our season um, playing uh, next weekend and the weekend after that. Oh, I've been looking forward to it for a year, as have the other guys. Um, it's been a really tough year, but we're hoping that it's all worth it with what's coming up. Yeah, and you talk about getting ready to play this season. Have you, have you taken a look at the schedule yet? Because that just came out today, I believe. Yeah, so we kind of had an idea of who we were going to play, um, but the schedule, um, it's tentative for now. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's, it's tough to say with COVID going on how many games we're going to play, when we're going to play, where we're going to play. But, yeah, I just took a look. Um, we got some good teams on the schedule, um, especially early on in the season with like Rochester and RIT. Um, we're, we're really looking forward to it, especially the, the good competition in our league. You know, we've made that transition from the E8 to the Liberty League for a reason. Um, the Liberty League is way more balanced and you're not going to be able to just walk through any team like you could sometimes in the Empire 8. Yeah. Do you want, do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Because I think that's that's an interesting aspect that you know, obviously a lot of people who are, who are at the Ithaca, whether they be athletes or not, don't really understand because baseball was the last program to transition from, from the Empire 8 uh, to the Liberty League. So, so and, and obviously with that being said, you're one of the, the only players or one of the only, only players left to do, make that transition as well. Um, so you want to talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, so I mean, the Empire 8 was kind of like they're a, a tier one and a tier two in my personal opinion. So we had, obviously, Ithaca, who we won it just about, I mean, in my two years that we were in the E8, we won it both years. Um, but then you had St. John Fisher, who was very good, and Stevens, who was very good. And once you got past those teams, it was kind of like you were walking into three game, three automatic wins every weekend. Um, and then this, this year, um, we've played out-of-conference games, obviously, in my first two years, and then even my third year. Um, the Liberty League, from my experience, is way more balanced, you know, you have teams that finish at the top of the league that can get beaten by um, teams at the bottom of the league at any point. Um, so I'm looking forward to personally uh, the transition for the first full year and playing really good competition every single weekend. Yeah, it's it's going to be exciting. I know it's a few of those uh, the non-conference games that you guys play are are uh, Empire Eight as well. I know St. John Fisher is is thrown in there in the middle of your schedule. Um, so so talking a little bit more about you know you personally, uh, obviously before this interview, I have to do my research. So I went on, talked to a few teammates, uh, former teammates, uh, went to your Instagram. Uh, and man, your Instagram is all baseball. It really is. So, so tell me a little bit, because when I talked to your, your teammates as well, they talked about your work ethic and, and the fact that you, I have people tell me that you are the hardest worker on the team. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your work ethic. And then, um, you know, once we get into that a little bit, maybe a little bit of, you know, your desire to play a little pro ball maybe later. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, in high school, I really didn't work that hard. And I think it showed. And that's a big reason why I didn't go to a division one school or um, a high division one school and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I got to college and I talked a little bit about this in my untold athletes thing um, where, you know, I, I saw right away, oh my God, I'm so far behind. Like, these, these guys are really, really good, and I'm going to have to do something to separate myself. So especially the past year, I'd say, when I've really had nothing else to do besides, you know, my online classes and then working out for baseball. Um, but going back to, like, my freshman year, in that after my freshman year, I made a promise to myself that no matter what happened, I'm going to do anything in my power to play professional baseball. And talking to Coach Val and younger Coach Val, you know, they, they made it very clear you're going to have to work a lot harder. Um, I was a little bit lazy my freshman year. I came in out of shape. Um, and then coming back into my sophomore year, uh, I was a lot leaner and stuff, and my swing was a lot better. Um, but, like, yeah, obviously, as a captain now, I really have to make it clear um, the culture here is working hard. And if I'm not going to work hard, then everyone else can make an excuse to not work hard as well. And I refuse to leave my, uh, my beloved Ithaca baseball program like that. 
Well, that's awesome, man. I really appreciate uh, your time. We appreciate you coming on. And obviously some good words to end off on there, uh, you know, preaching dedication and, and leading by example. So, so we really appreciate your time, man. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And with that, we'd like to say thank you to everyone else who tuned in to watch Garrett Callahan here on Bombers Live. With that being said, I'm Brendan Miller. Be sure to stick around and, or tune back in next week because we've got some more great interviews lined up. Again, a big thank you to Garrett. A big thank you to everyone behind the scenes. And that's going to be it from us here at Bombers Live.